Hi, Linda Tealfold here to share with you some quick load techniques. You know, before the fun can start, we've actually got to get the quilt top loaded. So I'm going to go over some of the things that I do when I get ready to load a quilt. You know, there's many ways to load a quilt, and today I'm just going to share with you the way that I like to do it. Um, every machine is a little different. Your roller situation may be slightly different than what the gamble is configured. But what I'm talking about today is more on the... Um, idea of how to speed up the process rather than the process itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the top. I've got it just draped over my machine. I have, you'll notice across the bar it's nice and smooth and that's important. You want to make sure there's no wrinkles in the top. And I'm just going to start at the edge. Now some of you may have um, from your machine manufacturer um, been told to pin every pin one right after another like little soldiers just marching down the edge of the quilt. And I prefer not to do that. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a lot of extra time. And if you'll notice, I put a pin in and my hand is in between there and the next open space. I'm going to put my next pin in. So between every pin is my hand. If your quilt is very flat, then this is a good method. Now if you have a quilt where the borders say haven't been attached properly and there's a little bit of waviness on the edge, then you're going to want to pin a little closer together because you can in, you can help ease some of that fullness in as you pin, which will help you when you go to quilt the quilt. So I'm just going to work my way across the quilt, putting in a pin, again the width of my hand, until I get all the way to the end. And then I'm going to roll the top up, get it out of the way, and load my backing. I want to smooth it out, get any wrinkles out of the way, and pull off this clamp, go down here, pull off this clamp, I'm going to release and just start rolling up. I want to keep an eye on things as I'm rolling because I don't want to roll any wrinkles into the top that may not be visible as I start. When I get to the table, when it drops down to the table, I'm just going to drop it over onto the floor. And then the rest you can just roll up by hand. And that's pretty much it. You've got your top loaded, and now we need to get the backing loaded. So I have my top loaded, and now you'll notice that I have the backing fabric draped over the pickup roller, and I've smoothed it out. Um, it's in the proper position left to right, and as you'll notice, there's no wrinkles. I've got it pretty well set and ready to, to load. I'll leave enough of it hanging down so that I can grab a hold of it. You don't want to just have it draped over a little bit because sometimes if you have a larger machine um, you can't quite reach that. So you want to make sure you can get a hold of it. And I'm going to take um, the backing leader. Now one thing to keep in mind, what I'm showing you is based on this particular gamble. Every machine manufacturer loads their backing top and batting slightly differently. So you need to refer to your manufacturer's uh, instructions. But for demonstration purposes on this gamble. I'm going to bring this up and over and I'm going to set that ratchet so that my um, leader is nice and tight. And then I'm going to use my clamp to help hold that and I'm just going to velcro that in place. And that way you're not, if you've noticed some of the time when you're loading your quilt you're struggling to get the, to hold on to this and keep this in place, that can be your third and fourth hand. So I'm just going to bring this through and put in the other clamp, make sure I've got that nice and tight. And then it's just a simple matter of bringing this forward and you want to make sure that you, you line, your, uh, line your edges of your backing and your leader evenly. That's very, very important. So again, um, because the backing is straight and we don't have any issues with rippling that you oftentimes get with a quilt top, um, this can even be pinned a little further apart. And that is one of the key differences between um, maximizing your loading time um, as opposed to what you, your dealer or maybe uh, your manufacturer may have instructed you to pin the pins closer together. It's really not necessary. And then I'm going to release my clamp on both sides and just make sure that the back is still straight. It's very, very important when you load that you maintain um, a flat, even backing. Now we're just going to get this all rolled up on here. And sometimes as you're, as you're working on this, if it gets a little out of kilter, just go ahead and grab it. You know, you can see from where you're rolling to pull it into the correct position. Now, 
I want to roll it so that I can have that batting or that backing more or less even with the leader that's back there. And you'll see why when we get around to the back side. When I go to pick this up, just give a little pull and it's nice and even. And you'll see it's really flat. That's very important because um, if the backing isn't installed correctly, then nothing you do with the quilting is going to make up for that. So um, again, because the backing is nice and flat, you can pin even less on this part, uh, which is how I'm able to load a full size, a queen size quilt in about 15 or 20 minutes. Batting, backing, top, everything. Now you may notice that I've started pinning from the center out. Um, you, if this was a real quilt, you know, you'd want to find the center of your backing and the center of your quilt top and you'd want to make sure that those were evenly set up on your leader. So I tend to pin from the center out on, on all of the pieces, but um, this is a personal preference. You know, once you have it in the center, you put one pin in there and you can start on either end, but I like to pin from the center out. And remember, as you work your way along, you want to keep that edge perfectly aligned. That's really, really important. Even, even if it was off by like a quarter of an inch, that would make a difference in the, um, the backing when you start to roll it up. It's going to roll up differently on one side than the other. So another tip is make sure that that fabric is cut squarely and straight. Uh, those of you that are quilting for hire, you may get batting, or excuse me, backing that uh, is not exactly straight and you're going to want to deal with that before you start the loading process because it will just lead to more headaches later on. So that is another tip that you need to be aware of. So we're all good to go. I'm just going to flip that over and get back down to this end of the machine. And I'm going to roll this up a little bit. You know, you paid for this big open space and you want to be able to use as much of that as possible. So I'm going to start the rolling process here so that I have as much open quilt space as I possibly can. You need to still um, you know, be able to get to this part in case you have to make any adjustments, you can reach your pins, but once you start rolling, um, you won't need to have that in your way. So now we're ready for the batting. In the early days when I started quilting, the manufacturers recommended that you pin the top, the batting, and the backing to the take-up roller. And um, that was problematic because for one thing, you had this little bulky bump uh, which could distort as you rolled and cause problems. The other reason is you could never quilt to the edge of your quilt. So you don't want to pin the batting or the quilt top to that take-up roller. So we do what's called a float. And that, in essence, is just what it sounds like. The batting and the quilt top are just going to float in position. So what I like to do to help me um, load the quilt top properly is I like to lay down a straight line of stitching. And I put the horizontal channel lock on, so that's engaged, and I bring up my bobbin thread. And if your machine doesn't have a small enough basting stitch, you may want to do this by hand. Um, it's going to be straight because your horizontal channel lock is on. So I'm going to baste all the way down across the whole length of the quilt. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my top up, and now, but just by putting that line down, I have a way to align this so that I know my top is nice and straight and square, and that's really, really important. Again, we're not going to pin this, we're just going to base this along this upper edge, so there's no more pinning involved. You're just going to run a line of stitching along that upper edge, and then you're ready to quilt. Okay, I've engaged my horizontal channel lock and I'm just going to baste along this edge. Now you may want to put a clamp on this end here where my hand is. And just work your way across. Now if you'll notice, I, I see how the fabric is kind of tending to want to push up there? Just use your hand and the base of the machine that you can't see to kind of work that over. So as you see, I'm sliding my hand as I go along. What I want to show you now is an alternate method, and this is even quicker than um, the method I showed you previously, where we pin the, the quilt and the backing to all of the rollers. This, you don't pin the quilt top at all. It's just free floating. So this is what's called a full float. So we're going to lay it up here, just like we did on our previous example. Again, using our basting stitch that we uh, put down as our guide. So I've got the quilt top all smoothed out, square and straight, and I'm just going to run a basting stitch along this upper edge, just as I did in the previous quilt. 
And you may be thinking, well, Linda, how do I keep any tension on that? How do I, how do I maneuver that? Because, you know, the quilt may not be perfectly flat, and I may get some puckers, and I'm going to be quilting, and this is going to pull up on the quilt. How am I going to handle all that? I have a trick for you. This is um, a magnetic tool holder that you can buy at most any home department store or a hardware store. And this is meant to mount on the wall and hold like wrenches and screwdrivers and things. And what you do is just lay that on your bar. Now, there is one caveat. If your machine has aluminum bars, this isn't going to work. But if you have steel bars like what comes on the gamel, then this works great. So. I have a whole bunch of these in my studio, and you can just mount these one right after another, um, and then as you get the quilt ready to quilt, you can actually just pull back on that bar to sever so slightly, and it gives you a little bit of tension, and yet there's no pinning involved at all. So to recap some of the quick load techniques we've talked about in this segment, just remember, put your pins in farther apart. That'll save you a lot of time. Utilize your horizontal channel lock so that your quilt is nice and square and straight. And experiment with full floating a quilt top. You might be surprised how well that actually works out. And lastly, head to your local hardware store, pick up some of these magnetic tool holders, and utilize those when you float your tops. I'm Linda Tealfold, and remember, with Gamel, you can realize your dream.